Consider this before viewing an inside look, the flu. Discuss what you already know about viruses. Are they cells? How are they transmitted? What kinds of infections do they cause? As you watch the program, note how a virus affects the human body and how the body's immune system prepares itself for battle. Assignment Discovery now presents an inside look, the flu. Holly Jones is a healthy young woman. Hi, Mayfield Stanley. Sixth floor. Thank you. But her body is about to become a battlefield. Can you hold the doors, please? Hold on. A sneeze explodes into the area at 40 miles an hour, sweeping 100,000 droplets of mucus into every corner of the elevator. Excuse me. Bless you. Most of these droplets are harmless, but some carry living organisms which are highly infectious. These bacteria and tiny viruses will spawn inside a human body. The cold, dry air of the elevator will kill them in minutes. They urgently need to find another human host. I'm a singer. Are you hoping to give up your day job then? Yeah, the uniform's too hot. The invaders have found refuge in Holly's nose, but they're not safe yet. First, they must get through the forest of hairs which lines her nostril. These hairs are her first line of defense. They trap nearly every particle she breathes in. The invaders are swamped by a wave of mucus. For the bacteria, this is as far as they will get. An enzyme in the mucus dissolves them away. But just one spiky virus survives. As Holly breathes in again, she rips the virus from her nose hair and sucks it into the cavern of her nostril. This is one of the more common viruses, called influenza B. It's on a mission to multiply. And to do so, it has to hijack a particular kind of human cell found in the lining of Holly's throat. The virus is now at the top of Holly's nostril. If it can reach her throat, it has the power to cause her total misery. Her winding nasal passages are designed to trap invaders and wash them into her stomach to be destroyed. But Holly's own breath pulls the virus free yet again, closer and closer to her throat. Against all odds, the virus has made it to Holly's throat. As it burrows through a thick sea of mucus, it approaches the cells which are its target. Now it has to pull off one final trick. The flu virus has evolved to take advantage of the way that human cells work. Hello? 
Holly's cells communicate with each other using proteins as messengers. Hello, Korea. The spikes on the virus allow it to impersonate one of these proteins. It docks with receptors on the surface of Holly's cell. The cell is fooled. It reads the virus as a harmless protein. The virus slips inside. The first stage of the invasion is complete. It's seven hours since Holly first breathed in the virus. She still feels fine, but deep inside her throat cell, the virus is already wreaking havoc. It has seized control of the cell's machinery. Instead of making proteins, the cell is manufacturing components for thousands of new viruses. Holly's cell has become a virus cloning factory. From this single throat cell, 10,000 viruses are born. Each new virus will set out to hijack another cell and turn it into a new cloning machine. Phase two of the invasion is on the way. I know this music journalist might come down and give us a review. Really? Yeah. Right, I'm just gonna run through what we're gonna do on Friday. Obviously set drums out at the back, yeah. We're gonna have two sets of four hours. In just two hours, the virus has infected 5,000 cells in Holly's throat. Then, Dave, you're gonna be stage left, so get all your gear around here. So your stuff's gonna be here, set all of your gear up there. If it spreads to her lungs, it could make her critically ill. Really, but I would imagine one, two. It's time for her body to fight back. The frontline troops of the immune system are the natural killer cells. They patrol Holly's body looking for trouble. They spray a poison to destroy the pieces of virus being hatched inside the cell. But this is warfare of the crudest kind. In the process, many of Holly's own throat cells are obliterated. Keyboard's at right angles, so that's okay. no problem. Excuse just a second, love. Thanks. Um, but whole, you're going to have the full run of the whole stage. now. We've got four I'm sorry to interrupt band with us, Alex. Want to get another coffee? Anyone want one? Oh, yeah, please, Monica. Cappuccino, no sugar? Yeah. How long have you been going out before? The crude methods of the natural killer cells aren't enough to contain the virus. It's now breeding inside half a million of Holly's throat cells. Somewhere in her body, she does possess the ultimate weapon against influenza B. Two single immune cells capable of wiping out the invasion altogether. But they are two cells among trillions. And until they're found, Holly's natural killer cells must soldier on alone. The collateral damage gets worse. Cell debris piles up in her throat. If it isn't disposed of, she could choke as she sleeps. But Holly's immune system has its own cleanup crew. These macrophages dispose of cell debris in a simple way. They eat it. Debris that isn't devoured by macrophages is carried away on tiny beating hairs called cilia to be swallowed and digested. For the first time, Holly can feel the effects of the battle being waged beneath her skin.
Trying to contain the virus, her own immune system has destroyed thousands of throat cells. Holly's throat has become raw and swollen and sore. Holly is getting the flu, but her symptoms won't be caused by the flu virus directly. Instead, they'll be triggered by the desperate rear guard action of her own body. The next phase in Holly's immune response has begun. Now her whole body will be recruited into the battle against the virus, and her well-being will be sacrificed until the war is won. The macrophages working in her throat release chemical smoke signals called interleukins. Interleukins surge through her bloodstream, summoning reinforcements to the battlefield. The interleukins also make Holly feel terrible. They make her nerves hypersensitive, so the slightest movement causes her pain. The virus has only attacked a tiny patch of cells in her throat, yet her body aches all over. Just go and get some rest. You'll be fine. But her pain has a purpose. Holly's body is telling her to slow down. She'll need every ounce of energy to defeat the virus. Well, you don't have to stay in just because of me, Rach. Actually, I'm not. I'm going out in a minute. Look, are you all right? Do you need anything? I'm freezing. Just don't care. The interleukins have opened up a new front against the virus. Holly's brain contains a natural thermostat, which keeps her body temperature at a steady 98.6 degrees. Unfortunately, this temperature provides a perfect breeding ground for influenza B. So the interleukins turn her thermostat up. This tricks her body into thinking it's cold. She shivers to heat herself up. Holly is getting a fever. As her temperature rises, virus cloning slows down. But other processes in her body speed up. New immune cells are produced at a faster rate. Even her hair and nails grow 20% quicker than normal. Holly's raised temperature makes the blood vessels around her brain swell. The pressure gives her a throbbing headache. Though very high fevers can be dangerous, it's not bad that she can't find any pills for her headache. Painkillers would also lower her fever and give the virus a new lease on life. Holly feels dreadful, but her immune system will make her suffer for as long as it takes to defeat the virus. Hello? Oh, hi, Dave. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, much better. No, really, I'll be fine. 
News from the front isn't good. More and more killer cells have arrived in her throat, but millions of new viruses are still being spawned. Okay. Well, come and check on me in the morning. All right. I'll see you then. Yeah. Bye. Holly's chances of singing on stage in 24 hours are looking remote. Her body is losing the war. Holly has been fighting the virus for 36 hours with no sign of success. But somewhere in her body, there exists a weapon so powerful, it could destroy the virus completely. The task is to find it. All over her infected throat, cells called dendritic cells have been gathering fragments of virus. Wearing virus spikes like badges on their surface, they go in search of the ultimate weapon against influenza B. You're not eating anything. So you clean the bathroom. That's all right, I get on my way out. See you later. Hope you're feeling better. Bye. All of Holly's hopes are pinned on the dendritic cells. The immune system is one of the most remarkable features of the human body. Here in Holly's lymph, a trillion cells known as T cells and B cells are floating, each one individually designed to kill a different foreign invader, each one waiting for the call. And among these trillion cells, just one T cell and B cell are designed to deal with influenza B. If they're found, they'll mount a devastating pincer attack on the virus. You all right, Hal? Hi. How are you feeling, Hal? Terrible. I'm sorry, but we're going to have to cancel. A dendritic cell reaches one of Holly's lymph glands. It offers up its virus spikes, seeking out the one cell which might recognize the virus. Finally, it docks with a T cell. For 25 years, this one T cell has been waiting to be called into action. It begins to divide. Within hours, the original cell will become thousands of T cell clones. You don't look good. No. Sorry. What if I'm ill that the minute I'm not around, you let Alex kick me out? So who's this Monica then? She's Alex's girlfriend. He wanted her in the band from the beginning. Can she sing? She knows the songs. She hasn't got the stinking flu. I'll be on stage now. Packed with dividing T cells, Holly's glands have begun to swell. But this time, her pain is a sign that the tide is turning. The T cells are launched into her bloodstream. In Holly's throat, the T cells arrive in the thousands. They home in on infected cells and take them out with surgical precision. The final battle has begun. <coughs> Holly's cough is further evidence that the T cells are winning. 
The cilia, which carry away cell debris, have themselves been damaged in the battle. Now the only way Holly can clear this debris from her throat is by coughing. Meanwhile, the other half of the pincer attack has begun. In Holly's lymph, a B cell has recognized a virus spike and begun to clone itself. Unlike T cells, B cells don't go to the battlefield. Instead, they manufacture millions of minute proteins called antibodies. Like tiny heat-seeking missiles, the antibodies target newborn viruses, locking onto their spikes. Smothered in antibodies, the viruses are paralyzed. They can no longer infect Holly's cells. The invader has no place to hide. The viruses breeding inside cells are killed by T cells. Free-floating viruses are neutralized by antibodies. Between them, they will wipe the virus out. But Holly's symptoms won't disappear just yet. Only when her immune system scales down its effort will she start to feel better. <coughs> it has taken a week for Holly's body to beat the virus. On the battlefield, new throat cells are starting to grow. Most of the T cells, their job done, shrivel and die. But some, known as memory cells, will patrol her body forever. The memory cells make Holly immune. If the virus tries to invade again, they'll instantly wipe it out. But influenza B has one more trick to play. It can mutate so that the next time Holly's memory cells might not recognize it, and she'll get ill all over again. <laughs> Though Holly no longer has flu, the last few viruses remain in her saliva. Her virus can't survive outside a human host. It urgently needs a new body to colonize. Keep watching. Discussion questions and activity and resources for an inside look. The flu are up next on Assignment Discovery. Now that you've seen an inside look, the flu, talk about this. In the past century, the widespread use of vaccines has saved many lives. Explain how vaccines work. What is the problem with developing a vaccine for certain infections such as the flu or the common cold? If everyone could be immunized, would the virus still exist? Why or why not? Now try this. Write a play that reenacts the battle between an invading virus and the human immune system. Consider the key characters, costumes, and set design. Log on to discoveryschool.com slash teachers for curriculum materials and resources to support an inside look, the flu. To learn more, Assignment Discovery suggests the immune system by Mark Friedlander and Dr. Terry Phillips. <laughs>